All right, here we go, champ. Come on. Okay, so as soon as you start, timer's running, okay? All right. So as soon as Jonathan starts, timer will be running. So what we're gonna do is he's got to get 40 reps. Doesn't so, but he can't go over five in a set. You know, you get five or less, okay? So it's on, and the rest breaks are on his on his intuition. So this wouldn't be if you're new to lifting, you don't know how long it takes to recover, things like this. This would not be the methodology for you. It's more of an intermediate to advanced type of training. There you go. One, two, three. Beautiful. Four, five. Good. Good. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna take Jonathan's 10 repetition max, and he's not allowed to do more than five reps in a set, so he can do five reps or less. Okay, so once he does a set, he's gonna start off with, if, I mean, he's gonna start with five, hopefully, if he doesn't, then, you know, this concept sort of shot, so you better get five reps at least. <laughs> okay, so, you know, five reps. He can go again whenever he wants, so the rest are intuitive. He decides when he feels recovered, he goes. He has 15 minutes, to complete 40 reps. So he goes five, 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 you go eight, so it's a five, we get you there, right. okay? It might be, you know, if he can no longer do five, he goes to four, he can no longer do four, he goes to three, so on, so we continue to go to 40 reps. So this is the ultimate form, of, this is a form of the total repetition method. So what he could do is after this, we're gonna take this and run with it. You, what you do is you, after you hit your 40 reps, you could either, you would um, increase the weight. If you didn't hit your 40 reps, you would stay at the same weight and hit it before you increase your weight. This method is uh, influenced by a guy named Charles Saley. I've read about in his book. I mean, other influences like Vince Gironda, those kind of guys too. You gotta give credit what credit's due. This is a great way to increase your density because as you do more weight and you don't prolong it, it gets denser and denser and denser because the volume is increasing, the time is not. There you go, one, two, three, beautiful, four, Five, good. You good. start doing this on like squats, deadlifts, and this is actually gonna be one of the main components of the new Strongman book we have coming out, part of the Jailhouse Strong series on tactical strongman training. Is this type of training with those events, that's a serious recipe for fat loss. You think about how many calories you're burning if you did something like this with farmer's walks, like you have to go 50 feet with a really heavy weight X amount of times in 15 minutes. I mean, you think that's more effective or or walking your poodle around the neighborhood. Sure. Yep. Here we go. Two. Three. Perfect. So right now, right now, Jonathan is just one and a half minutes into this. He's, he's got 10 reps done, so he's got 25% of the reps done. And, you know, 10% of the way done. That's the good spot to be in, so you want to stay ahead of that stuff. So he needs a little longer at the end. You got... One, yep. Two. Three. Yep. All right. 15. Yeah. Beautiful. I feel good. I feel good. Uh, I'm trying to pace myself to where I know that I can be able to knock these reps out and not like run too short to where I'm going to fail, but long enough to where we've obviously finish right with, within that, that the 15 minute mark. This feels like that, a lot of that real world type of endurance of situation you'd be in. You know, you're in Tijuana, take on the whole bar and all of a sudden you don't see there's some room, they've locked five bandejos in, they come in, you gotta go toe to toe and your heart rate's at 180. Well, guess what? You've been trained like this, it's on like Donkey Kong. Here we go. Yeah, oh yeah. Yep. 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 You know, in bodybuilding, some people do, some people do high reps, some people go heavy. Ronnie Coleman does both. This is how Jonathan is right here. Right. Just a different way of doing the volume. When you think about it, it's a lot of reps in 15, that's a lot of reps. We're talking 15 minutes 
I mean, th this is the anti-poodle dick. This is like, you know, Jonathan's a nice guy, seems like the church going type, but he's the kind of guy they'll put in the war hat and bring it here, and that's why he has going to have a huge year in bodybuilding this year. You don't want to miss reps, just because once you, if you actually, your muscles go to complete failure, you will get really fatigued. And we're, we're going for an amount of volume and a set amount of time. We're not trying, you know, if you want to do like a mincer type failure type thing, that's fine, but that's not this. You do not want to actually hit failure. There we go, come on. Yep. Two more. Let's go. If you guys are interested in a bench press series where we get Jonathan's bench press up to 600 pounds, you let us know in these comments. We do this for you, so we need your input. So let us know if you would like to see us take this man's bench press to 600 pounds, really refine his technique, and get that sucker peaked out. Strategically, that was very intelligent there. Did not take it a failure. You will get fatigued if you take the rep to failure. You're better off to leave one in, in the tank. Right. This is about repeated ability, not one all out set to failure. This is as real the trainees get. You know, some people like to walk around the, the you know, gym and they're, you know, walking around yelling MF, and then you look at it, they're curling like 15 pound dumbbells. I mean, the average like fitness freak could strap into his dick and swing it to make it longer if he wanted to. So it's not very impressive. This is as real as it gets right here. Yeah. Good. One more? Yep. So we have, you, you're at 14 minutes right now. Yep. Woo, 40 reps. So, 15 show. minutes. Made it short of 15, sec 15 minutes. Hold it there, Josh. 14.43, that's good. Actually a little bit shorter because I had to walk over and part took two seconds to get over and get it. <laughs> All right, so what's your first impression? You have to be able to pace yourself and make sure that you can get that a lot of them out within that time frame. Because if you try to overdo it, like he said, pushing yourself to failure, then you're gonna fall short. And it makes, it'll make things difficult as you continue down. So that was one of the key things that I had to do is make sure that I was able to, you know, save a rep, you know, along the way. And then towards the end, we strategically placed the amount of reps so that we can get there, obviously, short of the 15 minute time frame. Could you yeah. further explain why, uh, how not going to failure is beneficial? Yeah, so the reason, the reason, the, the reason on this exercise is twofold why he would not go to failure. Number one is he's gonna get it, uh, we're talking about doing a bench press series. If we do that, we, want, we don't wanna build bad technique right now and, and start failing, you know, because you think about it, so what's strength, strength skill. Practice, 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 the way to Carnegie Hall, no difference in anything else. That's number one. Number two is just a point of fatigue. So if you actually go to failure, you take it to full on failure, it's gonna be a lot longer and harder to recover from. So then you, you gotta get your tit in a ringer, excuse the expression, and you, you can't really get it done as fast. So you, you wanna, by saving a rep in the tank, when in doubt, stop on this methodology because you got a whole 15 minutes. So unless it's like the last rep, the last rep of the whole thing, you have to do or die, Fine, take the 50-50 shot, but other than that, you're gonna burn yourself out. This is like about getting as much work as possible in a set amount of time. So there's no point of burning yourself out. Just how if, like, if you had to run, uh, if I said, hey, you know what? Run, you gotta run two miles in you know, 20 minutes. Are you gonna do that? Are you gonna start like jogging? Or you think you're gonna balls out sprint as fast as you can? Like you look at how long, I mean, some textbooks record in exercise science, they recommend you take like 36, 48 times work to rest ratio when you work in that energy system a full out sprint. So if you're going a full out sprint for 100, you know, say you can do a full out sprint of 100, 100 meters in, in 12 seconds, 11 seconds or whatever. Okay, because you're fast, okay? So you're gonna do that, I mean, if you do that all out, it's gonna take minutes and upon minutes to recover. Or you can take it a little more half-assed and kind of, I'm not trying to say half-assed, but you gotta take that sort of philosophy here. Right. By the end, you're getting the maximum intensity. So look at it like this. You're sort of doing like tempo runs the whole way, then the last part is when you really sprint. <laughs> 